Hey everybody, welcome to another Professionally Incorrect. I'm Liam Clisham and today we're going to take a look at building an Anim Array type setup in Houdini, just like you would in C4D. Also getting into how to build this kind of knit stitch thing that GSG put out a while ago, but also inside Houdini. So hat tip to them, I'll just put a link into it if you've never seen it before. Um, but yeah, I thought this might be a nice little tiptoe into Houdini for anyone that's coming over from C4D. Not too many nodes, pretty easy to follow along. And if you wanna see how it's done in C4D and then see how it's done in Houdini, you have the opportunity to do so. Um, so quickly, I'm just gonna walk through an overview for anyone that is already kind of familiar with Houdini and they just wanna get to it. So I've thrown down a grid and inside this grid, it's just a four by four. Uh, rows and column on two by two sides, size, excuse me, and then packing that to go into this distance from geometry. The reason I'm packing it because I want to get that center point no matter what the size is there, and then getting a nice radial effect going on to drive this soft transform here. So I've taken the distance attribute that comes out of here, plugged into the soft transform, and I'm using that to kind of get this nice little bend in there. And then just stacking poly bevels up here. Um, first one is going on points. The next one's doing some edges. I think I set this one to round here. This next one, two has gone back to chamfer, but also on the edges. And that's basically it for getting the build of the stitchy look. I've got this primitive here just to kind of give myself a visual guide that isn't full of primitives in here, um, just to see the edges. So over in face hull, just unrolling with new points to see everything going on. And on the left side here, I've got this sweep, get that going. And then on the right, just a copy to points on all the points that are coming out of here. And this P scale here is linked up to the sweep. So whatever the radius is here, this is like, I think one and a half times that size, just so we get a little bit of bump up with these spheres in here when we merge it together. Um, so yeah, that's basically the setup, pretty straightforward. I'd say if you're already accustomed to Houdini, go ahead and hop in and start throwing down some bevels and uh, lining up some of these things. But if you're new to Houdini, let's start from scratch. All right, so I'm starting at the object level here and I just threw down a new grid and we've got a new geometry container here, labeled it Atom Array gonna come inside and just adjust these to what I had before, which was a two by two grid and four by four, just to make this nice lightweight grid. Super easy, um, nothing too intense, no code or anything for anyone coming over from C4D and worried about coding. And the next thing we're gonna do for building out this atom array is throw down a sweep. And if you ever used sweeps in Cinema 4D, it's very similar. Um, you might hook it up and you get this area and you're like, oh no, what do I do? It's just because this surface shape input is looking for something over here, but they've already got some defaults for you. I'm gonna set this to round, activate that here, and there you go. You've got almost an atom array. So what we're gonna do next is branch off to another side and we're gonna wanna take a look at these points here. I just turned this on to, so you can visualize it a little bit better. And how do we get spheres onto that? Well, in Houdini, it's pretty simple. <laughs> they have something called a copy to points. We've got copy to curves as well, um, but we, we want to do points. Grab this, and you, if you take a look and hover over these, you'll see that it gives you some indication of what it's looking for. On the right side, it's looking for points to copy to. And on the left side, it's looking for geometry to put in there. So we're gonna take this to get our points. And if you hit tab again and do a sphere, you'll see that we now get those where all of our points are on the grid. So at this point, we can basically merge the two together and get an atom array. Sort of. <laughs> we just need to work on our scale a little bit. So um, what I like to do, and I hinted at it before when I was going through the overview, is do kind of like 
a uh, set driver set driven with the stuff from the sweep going into the scale or the p scale attribute of the sphere um, so the best way to do that is we're going to come over here we can right click on the radius and you'll see we have copy perimeter just like set driver inside cinema 40. we're going to come over here and inside of houdini everything that's driving um, let's say the size or position or uh, various traits of this incoming geometry should be applied to the points because whatever is riding on the points over here is going to affect the spheres over here. So for example, if I do a randomize like this and it's set to color, I put this on here, you'll see these spheres now pick up this CD, which stands for color diffuse attribute and apply it to all the spheres here. So we want to do something similar with the scale. Luckily, that's easy. We can do an attribute create, and we're going to create the P scale, which stands for particle scale. Might be point scale, but I'm pretty certain it's particle scale. Um, and it just scales uniformly. So over here in the create, we're going to type P scale. And you'll see we get nothing. But if I start to scale this up here by middle clicking, if you're new into Houdini, you get this cool ladder right here and you can scroll up and down real easily like so. Um, you'll see we're now getting the P scale value. So how do we bring this in over here? Also pretty simple. <laughs> you come right click and there's a paste expression. So paste expressions, paste relative reference, paste other. If you want to do absolute references, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to get into all the differences of that. We just want to do a relative reference over here. And you'll see now it's picked up 0 0.033. If we come over here, it's 0 0.033. And I'm just going to make it a 0.25, nice number. And oh, that's updated over here. The nice thing that we can do with this too, that's a little bit more advanced than set driver, set driven in Cinema 4D is we can come in and actually manipulate this with math or other information too, if you've got other things that you want to drive this with and make it super complex. Um, but we've got this reference to this channel. The way we read this is just like if you're looking at uh, an Explorer or a Mac, the Finder. This is saying, go out of this object, look at the sweep, and then look at the radius. So we go out of this object here, Go on the sweep, look at the radius, which is right there. And now if we want to manipulate that, we can say, why don't we do times 1.5? So it's just slightly bigger than what we're getting over here. And if we merge these two together, we'll see it's not quite big enough. So we should try something a little bit larger. The cool thing about this too is that we can just middle click on it, come in and find our point there. So this is saying about six times the size for this particular setup. Um, but yeah, that's basically an atom array and you can switch it out for anything, which is great. So say you want to do an atom array on a sphere, throw this down here, throw this over here, and we're going to have to adjust this scale again, like so. Might even need to pull this one back a little bit because it's getting kind of thin, or thick, I mean. And now that's too thick. So a little bit of back and forth, just like in Houdini, or not Houdini, C4D. There we go. And now you've got an atom ray here. Um, yeah, so completely procedural, stays together. You can just manipulate it however you want. and. That's the basic setup for how we can go on to turn this into like a knit thing. So I'm gonna hook these back up with the grid here and that one there and move some stuff over, give us a little bit of space. Like so, clear that guy out. All right, so we're basically gonna be stacking bevels at this point. Um, 
let's take a look here. I'm gonna leave that flagged so we can see our updates going on. But if you hit tab, go to a bevel, toss this down here, and we're gonna put it in our left side over here because this is where we're gonna focus for the time being. And then we can update this over on this side afterwards. So take a look at this, flag that there. And if I start moving these apart, you'll see we're activating on the edges at first. So the first thing we wanna do is force this into points in here. And you're gonna see this kind of gets weird and triangly and just not looking quite right. And that's because we need to set this to always. Um, if we do auto, it'll try to only have points go in directions that aren't going to possibly intersect with each other or collide with each other. If you set always, it'll override that um, and then go until you hit a collision. And if you want to go further than that for some reason, you can turn off detect collisions or stop loops simultaneously, individually, or never. So if you turn it to never, you'll see we get these overlaps in here. Um, I'm just going to leave it individually for this. And I guess that's looking pretty good. One little trick here is if you don't want to do the corners of this for some reason, is you can do ignore flat points, and then it just does the insides there. Uh, you can also do ignore inline, which means it only does the corners. So some pretty nice customization abilities there. We've also got different shapes down here. So if you want to do multiple divisions in here, get some cool diamond looking things like that with round or chamfer like so just really endless possibilities to create that you, you can get in cinema but not to this degree it's kind of nice being able to build your own tools um, because you can even output different groups too i'm not going to get into this but if you want to mess around with groups what will happen is you can select one of these and it will output the fillet polygons and then if you throw out another bevel you can select to only work on those and you can just stack however you want which is just a really nice way to play um, not be held back by anything in the software so i think this is just too much we'll leave it at one for now pull this back in and let's go ahead and throw down another bevel. The way I just did that, I should have mentioned, is if you hold Alt on your keyboard and drag, it breaks out another branch, and then just drag it back over there. Don't need to hold Alt while you're dragging over here. It will just snap right in. So this time, I am going to set this to edges and pull this back in a little bit. I think that's looking pretty good. I just want to see what round looks like if we put a couple of those in versus chamfer get a little bit of difference in here. I guess, am I liking that chamfer? I think I do like the round in there. So do something like that. And then if we really want to, we can go ahead and put in one more. It's gonna blow it out. And we just separate these by a little, little bit in there, like so. We've got that nice kind of detailing in there. All right, so we're basically good to go. I think I'm gonna just put that down to two right there instead. And let's check out our sweep. And that looks pretty good. Our sweep thickness is all right. I think I wanna turn this back on, get our corners going as well, just to kind of really make it a little bit more elegant. And like I said before, the cool thing about Houdini is it's all procedural. So all we have to do is come out of this port now into this one to get our new points over here, like so. Turn that on, now you can see we've got all of our points lined up over there. If you wanna see what it looks like uh, without it fully merged together, you can hit the purple flag right here, and that will show you a template version of this, not the actual geometry, but just like a wireframe. And then you can see, okay, these are looking all right, or maybe you wanna come in and adjust this a little bit, maybe come down to like 5.5, like so. And now let's see it all together. And boom, we've now made an atom array with knitting possibilities based on bevels. So pretty short, sweet, easy tutorial. Um, one thing I'm gonna go into now 
is just some like extra detailing of how to put in like the soft transform and the attributes that go along with that. Admittedly, this is a little bit more intermediate, um, but if you wanna get that nice little bend that they do over in the Grayscale Gorilla video, this will be that part here. So the way we go about doing that is getting a soft transform going. And what a soft transform does is kind of uh, using like a radius to control movement in here, but without anything to drive it, it just goes overall to everything. Um, and there's a regular transform as well. And there's really no difference if you don't have anything for this to measure off of. So if I start to scoot this up here, you'll see it's just acting the same way. So we need to tell the soft tr transform where to get our measurements from uh, to drive our, our radius. So I'm gonna throw down what's called a distance from geometry. And what this does is it'll take your initial input and you can ignore these errors right now. It's just saying that, that something upstream is not working right. And it will look for another source to measure distance from. So if I were to take a sphere, put it in here like so, it will now try and measure the distance from this sphere to the rest of the points in the scene or in the on the grid. Um, so if I were to crank this up to like 16 by 16, you'll see we start to get this purpley blue gradient in here. Um, there's ways to control that by coming in here and you can set the colors yourself. If you want to do like black to orange or black body or grayscale. Um, I tend to like grayscale just because I then know zero is black and one is white. So um, to each their own, but that's how you can change that in there. But what if we move this object accidentally and then we lose the center point or um, we change the size of this or we deform it some more? The way I thought about getting around this was just by packing the object. And what packing does is essentially tells Houdini, hey, this is going to be used again or uh, kind of just makes it into an instance. If you're familiar with that inside C4D, it's just packed down into a single dot. So if we right click on this, you'll see that we have 225 primitives and all these points, vertices, etc. Right click on this and it's now one. <laughs> and it just uh, takes up a lot more memory or a lot less memory, excuse me, too. This is 18 kilobytes and this packs it all the way down to 2.8, so three kilobytes. A lot more lightweight, et cetera, et cetera. But the benefit of it is it gives us our center point right there. So that way, no matter what we do here, let me turn off these points. Uh, that's back on, good. If I scale this up in any direction, it'll always get the center point here. So that's never gonna change. And so we can't really screw anything up and just keep going like so. So if I'm, oh, I guess I'll turn the color back on in here for dist. It was kind of easier to see. I don't know, am I getting a viewport error now? Seems like it. Let's just do a quick reset viewport, see if that fixes it. Uh, nope, of course not. Turn that back on. All right, no big deal. It's working. Uh, just getting a weird little hiccup with the viewport at the moment. Anywho, I'm gonna reset this back to two and two and four and four, like so, and go back to the soft transform. All right, so again, nothing's happening here, and that's because it's looking for a metric to measure this on. And like I said before, we're gonna use this attribute, and the attribute is called dist, without caps, dist, like so. So if we start to move this around, Ha. Huh. Sorry about that quick edit. I realized I forgot to do something with the distance from geometry and uh, just blanked on it. So backtracking a second, 
going up into our distance from geometry, we want to make sure we're setting this to points. Um, it was by default set to primitives, and if we set it to points, then it'll reference everything properly. And then when we come in here, put our distance attribute, it works properly. So if we don't have apply rolloff turned on, it's going to try and do everything outside. If we turn apply rolloff in, we can set our own radius in there and kind of control our fall off like so. I think 0.35 is probably a nice subtle little fall off going on in there. And if we come down here, there you go. You've got that nice little displaced arch that we see in the other GSG video. All right, so that's it for me today. If you have any questions about anything, go ahead and leave them in a comment below. But I think this is pretty straightforward for everybody. Thanks again for supporting me and watching and everything. If you're not already subscribed, I appreciate it. And if you can give it a like, if you like this, that helps as well. But yeah, I'll see you next time.